language in which you'll be speaking. We'll start here at the front, please. Hi, I'm Tali Sazoni with the Associated Press in English. Uh, coach, you have one of the youngest squads in the tournament. How does that help and how does that hurt uh, your chances? Hi to everyone. Uh, I think it's very positive because young players bring to the team energy. And yeah, we try to manage that with the experience that we have as a staff and trying to get the best for any player. Okay, next question here in the middle, please. Second row. Hello, Luis Enrique, Federico Calderon to the sports. Emeric Laporte said yesterday that they had not watched any video analysis of Costa Rican players. Have you done so one day before the match? Not right. So, so why have you not done this? Uh, is it not that important what Costa Rica do? No, 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 no. It's, it's, that's not the reason. The technical staff, we provide all the information to our players on the same day of the match throughout the week. In our conversations, we talk about what to expect from the opponent, what Costa Rica might be planning to do, but then the talk itself, uh, whatever the opponent is, Costa Rica, Japan, Germany, that takes place the same day of the match. We analyze what could be important, where can we have an impact. We've been training throughout the whole week, uh, play situations that could take place against Costa Rica. We deeply respect all the national teams in the World Cup, especially those in our group and Costa Rica. I did make a mistake and mentioned that they were part of a different confederation. It was a mistake, and I already mentioned this public publicly. Um, yeah, maybe um, it was a bit silly or confused. It doesn't matter. I've been to that country. I know it very well. I love their energy and their pura vida, as they say. It's just uh, those who uh, focus on mistakes like this. It might be because they never make mistakes. I do, and then I just apologize. I know of the great energy and vibe, and therefore I know that they wouldn't bear, the, they wouldn't um, pay attention to this. And if they do, I'm sorry. It will be a very tough game. It's their fair participation in, in the World Cup. They are always very competitive. And so they'll be tomorrow. These people breathe football and it will be a very tough game for us, but that does not mean that we are eager to win this first match. Sergio Santos Relevo, I wanted to ask you about Rodrigo. Against Portugal, he played as a centre-back, as an emergency measure because uh, another player had a... Hugo had a they, they had a yellow card and will they play in this position again or well we have many players that could play in different positions two or three of them and they can do it very well because if we're going to swap players in a different position and they're not going to do it well i mean but we can do this uh, Hugo, he plays uh, in the center back. He also plays as a defensive midfielder in his club. Laporte can play in the right back, left back. He can also play as a center back. And as a coach, this is great for me to have um, so many possibilities. And I can do this throughout the World Cup. I can use them in several positions. The lady here, please. Eli Arba, Televisión Española. Coach. You just spoke in English, you've been streaming, you feel comfortable, you are taking on the leadership of this national team and I wanted to know how you're feeling from an emotional point of view. Uh, ahead of the World Cup. Yes, well, the leader of any national team has to be the coach. You are the one making decisions. 
So even if it's your first time as a coach, you have to be a leader. Otherwise, players won't trust, trust you if you are hesitant. I am the one deciding who is cut, who's playing, how or we're going to play our playing style. This is logical and it makes sense. And also, a leader needs to empower their players so they can play their best in a difficult situation on the pitch. We have to provide them with solutions, and that's what we all try to do. Um, an emotional point of view, I feel very well. I'm so pleased to be here and to make my debut in a World Cup. I had the opportunity to play and enjoy uh, this celebration of football. Um, calm, just waiting for our last training session this evening, and tomorrow we will experience this debut and try to make everyone happy. No more pictures from now on, but you're welcome to stay in the room. Okay, we'll take next question. Here, please. A row? Yeah. Hola, ¿qué tal, mister? Javier Herraiz de la Cadena Ser. Hello, coach Javier Herraiz. Cadena, sir. I wanted to ask uh, Morat and Carvajal, they have a coach, how are they feeling, will they be able to play tomorrow, and then can you talk to us about Gaia? He had to withdraw uh, well, uh, in Valencia, they said that he was fit to play even this week. Yes, and even yesterday, right? Okay. So the first question was, how are they feeling? Yeah, they have a cold because of the air conditioning. I spoke with the medical staff this morning, in theory, and we have a, still a training session this evening. We have to wait, but they should be ready to play tomorrow. We want them to recover perfectly. Hugo, he still needs to, play, to train with the ball, but we think that they will all be available. And then as regards Gaia, this is something that happens everywhere. Every decision is judged. I I have to make decisions if I followed my heart based on Gaya's professionalism. He'd be here, but I can't just make decisions following my heart. I have to also uh, do it with my mind. And two out of the three games, he would not have been able to play 100%. And Unfortunately, I have to make the best decision, decision positive and uh, based on my responsibility for the whole country. Imagine if I were to do what people in Valencia want and what the player deserves, which is keeping him here. And then Jordi Alba, imagine that he has a blow, uh, even if it's something light, we start the first two games in the World Cup with no left back. Then you would all say, how have we how have we reached the situation? Therefore, what the heart tells me is to keep Gaya, but then what my mind tells me is that I should do the best for the team. And the best for the team is, there's no doubt about it, considering Gaya's injury is to have two fully fit left backs before the World Cup. Hello, Luis Fernando Burgos, Onda Cero. This happened with a different player. Uh, just examples. No, 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 no examples. No, no. I'm going to answer the question, but no examples. And then you'll understand why when I give you my answer. Okay, well, we have Busquets. He's very important. He missed the Euro. Would you have done the same? No, no. You might not believe this, but it's the only position where I, can, I cannot just keep waiting for someone else because no one else, no other player will be able to adapt to the demand required for a left back. Yes, a wing back can act as a winger in certain times because they might be good in the attack, but you know, it's very unfortunate. And Gallao is unfortunate. It's the only position where I can not wait. Had this happened to a centre back, a defender midfielder, they he'd be here, and I would have waited until the last minute. But you, you know, I only had two players for that position. I have holes, and I couldn't wait. And I'm deeply sorry, Jose Gaya. He's so good, and I really like him. I really appreciate him. But uh, I have to forget about my emotions and think with my mind about what a coach should do. And he's been very unfortunate about the, the injury. Um, 
It took place when he was crossing the ball by himself, never seen before. But luck determines what's going to happen to each one of us, and this this, but now it's very painful for Gaia. Maybe it won't be that painful in the future and he will be able to draw positive conclusions. I'm sure. Hi, Luis Enrique. Luis, Luis Echevarria for Costa Rica. A couple of questions. In Costa Rica, it's really important to have a, a lot of players who have played in Spain. We have Borges, for example, in Deportivo. We have Keylor as well. And Keylor had a great career in Spain. Well, first of all, what can you say about the Audazi? What are your expectations for Spain in this World Cup? Well, we obviously know about the team, we know about Costa Rica and a lot of players. You, saw, you talk about Oscar Duarte, about uh, Keylor Navas, Campbell as well, who played in Spain, Borges. Uh, obviously, they have a big experience at this level and they know how, what is playing a World Cup. And they have a head coach, an expert one as well, who played a lot of big competitions. I think they will be really competitive, I'm sure. Uh, it's re it will be really tough for us, and we'll have to do really good. What are our expectations? We don't know. I mean, we don't know where we can go, but we want, obviously, uh, to play seven games. That's our aim, play seven games. But I think it's the same for all the nations, no? Uh, every team wants to play seven games and I think it's good I think the 32 uh, teams can win the World Cup we have to believe in what we do and uh, try to have good results sorry Keylor Navas what can I say one of the best players in the world uh, we obviously know him uh, very well you know his profile and his leadership in this team we know it's a really good player please just one question per journalist and then we pass the mic please and we wait for the mic from mundo deportivo i want to know i would like to know how do you manage further than the physical part the emotions for this first game in the world cup obviously a lot of nerves a lot of stress for this first game well, naturally, I think um, we're training every day uh, to play this game. So when the moment arrives, obviously there's a lot of you know excitement and uh, everything has this good and bad side. I think it's beneficial for for us to be only together for like nine days. I think so. We only we always start this competition with only nine days uh, together. I think it's positive. It's positive as well. Because if you prepare like much more days, it's probably too much energy, right? I think we really we are ready uh, for this game, and tomorrow we have to prepare the game and try uh, to, you know, reach this perfect point in each player. It's not easy because obviously each player has, has a point uh, to be at the is perfect form, but we'll try to do it, obviously. Hi, Louis. Uh, James Ducker from the Daily Telegraph in the UK. Um, Louis, I've, I've noticed that you've had a scaffold erected at the training ground, um, like you have in um, Spain. Can you just talk through, you know, why that is so important for you to, to watch training from? And also, is it true that the players have, have had their own mattresses um, brought over? I, I assume, obviously, it's very important to you that they get a proper night's sleep. Yeah, but, but uh, it's a simple idea, you know. I need to view the the pitch from upside and to look all the players um, and try to get the, the right information to the players. It's very simple, basic, and yeah, it's nothing special. Everybody is talking about that, and for me it's a, a joke because uh, I try to to do the best for help my players. Okay, we'll take one last question here for, please. Hey, buenas tardes, Javier Asfronda, ABC. Javier Asfronda for ABC. I want to know about the dupe, the doubts that you can have about this first 11 you have to put tomorrow. And is it more physical or tactic, uh, tactical doubts? No, none of them. Uh, the doubts I have is because I've seen the players. They are in the really really high level. The training sessions are spectacular. And I obviously, I always say the same. It's true, but uh, I always talk about feelings. But I think that the players know that in training, 
in the training session is where you can win your position, your place for the game. And they know that, and uh, the intensity is really high. When we do tactical uh, work, it's really, really difficult to take them the ball. We are training at a really, really high level, intensity, so we can, you know, compete really well. I don't choose the players for, you know, according to physical or technical parts, I just for the feeling I have when I've seen in the training sessions. Obviously, we speak, I speak with the staff and uh, try to see what can happen in the game and then seeing how the players are Thank you so we much. you know do this 11 the first 11 for the first match